Excellent. We are now live on YouTube for everyone who is joining the meeting who is not a voter. If uh, you've just joined the meeting now on YouTube, um, welcome to our first virtual annual YMCA general meeting. And we should be starting the meeting shortly. So welcome. Are you ready to start, Sharon? I am. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sharon Peterson, and I'm the CEO of the YMCA of Okanagan. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for joining us. This is the first time the YMCA has conducted a virtual annual general meeting, and I'm hoping it's actually our last. So thank you for your patience as we do our best to use technology to hold this meeting. I'd like to walk you through some rules of engagement and some how-tos. You've all been sent a link to the documents that will be referred to during the business portion of this evening's meeting. These also will be presented as slides during. Only voting members, as described by the YMCA of Okanagan bylaws, have been provided with an active link to today's meeting. Voting members include the board directors, those donors who have made receipted donations for each of the last two years, and active volunteers who have contributed a minimum of 20 hours of voluntary service for each of the last two years. Everyone has been muted, and with the exception of our speakers, video cameras have been disabled. We also have a number of non-voting members who are viewing this meeting through our live stream. Welcome to all of you, and thank you so much for taking the time to listen in. For those of you with a vote, there will be six times during the business meeting where we will need your participation. These include approval of the agenda, approval of the minutes, approval of the audited financial statements, approval of the auditor for 2020, approval of the slate of directors being presented for election to the board of directors and the adjournment of the meeting. For each motion made, we will need a mover and a seconder. If you wish to move or second a motion, please type move or second in the chat box. And these names will be announced and recorded in the minutes. If you're watching tonight's AGM on your personal computer, you'll find your controls and the chat box at the bottom of your window. If you're using a mobile device, tap on your screen to make the control bar appear and then tap participants. You will see the chat box there. Please note that there will be a pause whenever we are asking for your participation in order to allow you time to access your chat box. Prior to voting on the motion, the board member will ask if there is any discussion. If you wish to comment or ask a question related to the motion, you can do this also in the chat box. You can also select raise hand and our moderator will active, activate your mic so that you will we'll be able to hear you and respond to your question. After comments or questions, a poll will pop up on your screen asking you to vote on the motion. You will need to check either the approved or opposed box to register your vote. The board chair will then announce that the motion was either approved or defeated. At the end of the meeting and after the volunteer award and staff long service awards, we will open the floor again for any other questions or comments. Again, you can choose the, the chat box or raise hand. For non-voting participants who are viewing this meeting through YouTube, please send any questions you may have to hello at ymcaokanagan.ca and the WISE staff team will respond within the next two or three business days. The email address will be posted again at the end of the meeting. We will be repeating some of these instructions as we go through the meeting, so you don't have to memorize them. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our chair of the Board of Directors, John Duff, who will begin our official annual general meeting. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Sharon, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first, I would like to call the meeting to order at uh, 5.08 p.m. Um, secondly, do we meet the minimum number of voting members as required by our bylaws for a quorum? Yes, we have 34 voting members today at the meeting. Okay, thank you, Rhonda. Okay, then I'll proceed to reviewing the and looking to the approval of the agenda. Uh, it's on your screen right now. Uh, can I ask for a voting member to move and a second member to second the motion to approve the 2019 AGM agenda as presented? As Sharon has mentioned, this can be done by typing in move or second in the, uh, in the chat box. So as we review the AGM agenda, if I could have someone move and someone second. A motion to approve the 2019 AGM agenda has been moved by Rod Gibbings. Thank you, Rod. And seconded by Dave Bond. Thank you, Dave. So moved by Rod Gibbings, second by Dave Bond. Is there any questions on the motion? Uh, you can make your comment or ask your question by using the Q&A, chat, or raise hand controls. And we'll pause for about 15 seconds here if there's any questions on the agenda. Seeing nothing in the chat box. Um, so members, please register your vote um, by uh, using the poll that will now pop up on your screen. We will give everybody time to record their vote. The poll should be on your screen now. Okay, I'm going to end the polling in about three seconds. Okay, I'm seeing the poll results here at 100% uh, approved. Uh, so the motion to approve the 2019 AGM agenda has been passed. Thank you, everyone. Okay, next we'll move into the uh, approval of the 2018 AGM minutes, uh, which you see up here on your screen now. Um, same as before, can I now ask for a voting member to move and a second member to second the motion to approve the minutes of the 2018 AGM dated April 23rd, 2019 as presented. This again can be done by typing in move or second in the chat box. The motion to approve the minutes has been moved by Judy Shoemaker. And seconded by Deanne Taylor. Okay, so motion to approve the minutes has been moved by Judy Shoemaker and seconded by Deanne Taylor. Uh, are there any, or is there any discussion on the motion? You can make your comment or ask your question by using the Q&A chat or raise hand controls. We'll give about 10 to 15 seconds for anyone that may have a comment or question on the 2018 AGM minutes as presented on the screen. Okay, so let's move to register. Uh, members, please register your vote by using the poll that will now pop up on your screen and we will give everyone some time to record their vote. 
uh, Allison, if you uh, want to start the poll. So the poll should be up on your screen now. The poll will be ending in about five seconds. Okay, I'm seeing the results on my screen. Uh, unanimous approval, the motion to approve the 2018 AGM minutes has been passed. Thank you everyone. Okay. Onto the board chair report. Um, it's uh, my great pleasure to share some highlights of our achievements over the last year in 2019. Three years ago, the staff and the board developed Vision 2020, our strategic plan spanning the period 2018 to 2020. And I can proudly report that we have achieved almost all of the goals we set and will soon begin developing the foundation of our new and our next strategic plan. Vision 2020 had four key priorities, people, growth, impact, and excellence. So we'll move to the first slide, uh, focusing on our people. The current labor shortage in our community and across the country felt most acutely in 2019 and earlier this year, along with the need to stand out among many employers looking for great people has been a major focus for our YMCA. In response to this challenge, a significant number of initiatives were implemented to increase staff and volunteer recruitment, engagement, and satisfaction. These included launching a staff recruitment and retention media campaign, increasing compensation for our frontline staff, initiating an equitable and consistent employee recognition program, restructuring our health, fitness, and aquatics division to focus on supporting, mentoring, developing and engaging our staff, introducing new scheduling software, establishing a lifeguard academy in collaboration with several high schools, supporting staff in achieving their infant, toddler and early childhood education certificates, developing a new volunteer recruitment and retention strategy, modifying and streamlining the onboard, onboarding process and package and sourcing and soon introducing the new software to engage our employees in managing their own employment experience and free up managers to spend more time coaching and developing our great team and employees. Both the board and the staff executive team understand the importance of having strong and engaged staff and volunteer teams. Focusing on our people will continue and remains a top priority for 2020 in our new strategic plan. Next slide, as we, as we talk about our planned growth. While many YMCAs across Canada have experienced declining membership in their health, fitness, and aquatic centers, ours have been continuously growing over the past three years. This is due in part to a growing community, but also to the high quality programs being delivered by an amazing staff and an amazing volunteer team. At our peak in 2019, active members reached over 17,000, over 12% Kelowna's population. In March of last year, we also opened a new child care center at Queens Park Elementary School in Penticton, which you can see up on the screen, uh, providing care for 60 children ages 0 to 12, and we are planning a new 70 space child care center in the Dilworth area. The project has been delayed due to the COVID-19 restrictions. However, we hope to begin construction this fall. In our community division, we added early years programs in the South and Central Okanagan, helping families navigate community resources for their child's healthy development. A new life skills program in Penticton for youth ages 13 to 19, who have been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder and other developmental disabilities and Youth Connects, an employment program for youth at risk. And in 2019, we advanced our partnership with UBCO to deliver small steps for big changes at the downtown and Kelowna family YMCAs. This pre-diabetes management program is showing promising evidence in lowering the chances of developing 
type two diabetes for those most at risk. Now onto our charitable impact. As you can see on the slide, uh, last year over $832,000 was provided in financial assistance to 5,500 people, ensuring everyone has equal access to YMCA facilities and programs. In addition, over $245,000 was raised to fund programs that would not run without donor support, such as our Beyond the Bell program and our Young Parents program. Over 1,400 donors made a gift to the WISE annual campaign last year, raising almost 600,000, and we couldn't be more grateful for this much needed support. And then foundational excellence. Investing in new technology has become an imperative for most organizations. In 2019, significant resources went into new registration and people management software. And we hope to have this implemented by fall of this year. Our staff has worked hard over the past year to increase community awareness of the YMCA as an important charity by sharing stories of the impact experienced by individuals and families throughout the Okanagan. Effective use of social media, strong relationships with our media partners has made more people aware of the great work your YMCA is doing to support a strong community. Using our resources wisely to ensure a strong future for the continuation and growth of YMCA programs has always been a significant priority for our YMCA. We are proud to say that the board of present and past have prepared us financially for the impact of facility and program closures due to COVID-19. These of course are only a few highlights of the incredible work and accomplishments of the YMCA in 2019. Every day our staff and volunteers focus on providing quality programs, excellent service and always bring their best selves to the YMCA. Because of this, our YMCA is meeting and exceeding national YMCA program quality and satisfaction score targets helping more and more people each year achieve their personal objectives and continues to be strong financially and organizationally. An entire year of work is hard to describe in a short report, but suffice it to say that 2019 was another very busy and very productive year for our board of directors. And I want to thank all of them for their hard work in fulfilling their governance and philanthropic roles. Regrettably, two of our valued board of directors, board directors are leaving this year. On behalf of the board, staff, and volunteers at the YMCA, it is my pleasure to recognize the following board members for their dedicated service to the YMCA of Okanagan. First, Joni Metherell. When not practicing as a lawyer and partner with Pusher Mitchell, she has been giving her time and expertise to the YMCA as a director, past board chair, and donor for almost a decade. Joni has served on the Y's board for a total of nine years, made up of four two-year terms, the maximum number of terms a member can serve, and an additional year as past chair of the board. During her time on the board, Joni provided important leadership during a period of rapid growth, program expansion, new partnerships for our YMCA, during her board tenure, Joni participated in a number of committees, task forces, served as YMCA's board chair from 2016 to 2018, is a chair's roundtable level donor and rides each year in the YMCA's Cycle for Strong Kids fundraiser. Joni's experienced practical and reflective contributions to board discussions and decisions over the past nine years has enabled the YMCA to move forward on many important decisions with confidence, knowing that the due diligence had been completed. While Joni is leaving the board, she has agreed to stay on to be a member of our newly formed philanthropic committee. Thank you, Joni. Sharon Verrett. Sharon has been a member of the Y board for seven years, retiring last September. Sharon too has provided significant expertise and leadership as both a director, chair of the governance committee and member of the finance risk and audit committee. During her tenure with the board and utilizing her 30 plus years of business management and board governance experience, Sharon contributed significantly to building a strong and professional governance culture that has shaped board relationships and decision-making. Sharon and her husband, Cam, are significant donors to the YMCA's charitable work, specifically supporting the Beyond the Bell program. 
Thank you both, Joni and Sharon, for your many, many contributions to the YMCA and ultimately to our community. And now I would uh, like to turn it back over to our CEO, Sharon Peterson. Thank you, John. I would also like to thank, add my thanks to Joni and Sharon for their many years of service, support, and guidance to both myself, the staff team, and the YMCA in general. I'd like to devote my report this evening to sharing the challenges and opportunities that the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to our YMCA over the past several weeks. For all of us around the world, this is, this is a significant historical event, one that is almost beyond our imaginations. But I believe that together we can decide what future generations will learn from our collective responses now. For almost 40 years, the YMCA has adapted and responded to community needs through fires, floods, and recessions. And hopefully we have demonstrated that our employees, volunteers, and communities can count on us in the good times, but also in the bad. We take our mission to heart and our values of caring and inclusion are more important now than ever before. Some of the decisions we've had to make due to COVID-19 have been very difficult. Sorry, I knew I would do this. The closure of our three health, fitness and aquatic centers resulted in the layoffs of over 200 staff. Wow, sorry, I practiced this too. Heartbreaking when, when our white colleagues are more like family than employees. And when charitable dollars are needed now more than ever, we've had to cancel and postpone our largest whew, fundraising events of the year. Financial analysis and scenario planning are consuming a leadership team. Oh, when just Two short months ago, we're focused on becoming an employer of choice and expanding our programs to serve more people. But despite our struggles, every day I discover that our teams have performed yet another small miracle. Oh, John, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> oh, thanks to our members, donors, staff, volunteers, and partners like you, who despite the closure of all of our health centers and many points of service are more active than ever, helping our communities face this crisis and preparing for what comes next. Here are some of the ways the YMCA is still here for our community through all stages of the crisis. We're working in collaboration with government to continue providing critical early years childcare services for essential services workers in Kelowna and Penticton. We are working with our local school district and collaborating with other service organizations to continue providing essential school age childcare for children of essential service workers at several locations throughout Kelowna and Penticton. Without this service, those workers could not possibly continue their vital work of caring for us. Several of our incredible Y fitness instructors have stepped up to volunteer their time to teach online daily live fitness classes. And our early year staff have set up an early years community page on Facebook providing live story time and crafts. Along with other YMCAs, we have helped create a library a virtual on-demand resources to help members and families stay active and engaged while sheltering at home. Why Thrive provides an uh, on-demand fitness classes for all ages and abilities. Why Play includes songs, crafts, and workouts for kids. Why Well provides mental wellness, meditation, leadership development, and wellness, wellness programs. And Why Gym, newly added, provides instructor-led physical activities for children aged five to 15. We are reaching out to and supporting some of our most vulnerable and at-risk populations. Daily online tutoring and weekly learning boxes and snacks are being delivered weekly to our Beyond the Bell families. And food and base, baby basics, which have been donated, are being distributed to our young parents and their infants, so they have one less thing to worry about. Staff are volunteering to regularly reach out to our senior members to ensure those in isolation feel connected and have the supports that they need. And our youth employment and community program staff are reaching out to their participants every day through digital tools to support their mental be well being. We certainly have learned how to use technology, not terribly well, but we're, we're doing our best. We're helping our staff to understand and access financial supports, ensuring everyone has access to government financial aid and EI. We have extended health benefits for staff who've been laid off and we're offering an emergency support fund for those facing acute circumstances. 
and have called upon the WISE in BC are here for emergency response by offering our infrastructure, facilities and our staff to all levels of government, which could include pop-up hospitals, testing centres, blood donor clinics and homeless shelters. There are not enough words to express how grateful and proud I am of our community, who despite the crisis are finding big and small ways to make a difference. I can only thank all of you for staying with us. To all of our members, thank you for not cancelling, but putting your membership on hold instead so we can resume the programs and classes you come to depend on. And to those 100, oh dear, <laughs> the 150 members and counting who have offered to donate their membership fees so we can respond to urgent community needs and prepare for the future. Thank you so much. To our caring and thoughtful donors, thank you for digging deeper during a time when we need you the most in order to lift those most impacted. Oh. To our board of directors, thank you for your unyielding support, leadership and clarity when having to make some of the very difficult decisions lately and providing the insight and advice needed so we have the ability to bounce back when we resume our operations. And to our incredible staff and volunteers, thank you for being understanding, patient and resilient. We hope that you'll all stay with us for what you make possible for others is so invaluable. I'm really aware that when you're the CEO, you often receive an unfair share of the credit for the work of your organization. I owe so much of the credit instead to our superb board of directors, my super competent management team, our dedicated and hardworking staff and our generous and loyal donors, partners and volunteers. We can't wait to welcome you back when it's safe to do so. In the meantime, please take this time to connect with your family and stay healthy and safe together. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sharon, uh, for what I know was a, a very difficult CEO report, but, but truly hard, a truly heartfelt CEO report uh, in a difficult time showing your connection to your team, your volunteers, uh, and your members. Thank you for um, your amazing leadership, in particular, over the last uh, number of months. So thank you so much. Uh, I would now like to introduce uh, Dave Bond, our YMCA board treasurer. Thanks, John. And I, I guess I got to thank you for getting me to follow Sharon's report, because I don't know if I can do better than that. I get to talk about the financial statements, which, as I know, is, is everybody's highlight to their uh, to every AGM. And I noticed that th um, the good thing is that that the actual financial statements in your package, the numbers are a lot bigger than they are showing up on my screen right now. Um, just to echo what uh, John and uh, Sharon had mentioned, um, the financial statements uh, really reflect that the strong leadership from the wise management team and, and prior boards that have actually built um, some net assets, <laughs> excuse me, and a nest egg so that we, we do have some reserves in place that allows us to properly plan and uh, work through the current COVID-19 situation. Um, in the financial statements in your board package, and we've got two of the statements up on the screen, um, there is the statement of financial position. And the statement of financial position that you can see there, it shows the assets, you know, what assets the, the Y has, um, what liabilities that the YB owes and certain things and net assets. The net assets are um, prior surpluses and cash that's been put aside for future years. So um, the two primary assets that the Y have is, is cash and that's broken up in two numbers. There's a number there called cash and cash equivalents at the top of the page. And if you look, if you work from left to right, um, there's a column that says 2019. Those are the December 31st, 2019 balances. And the balance over to the right is the comparative December 31st, 2018 financial statements. You'll see at the top of the page, it, it says we have cash and cash equivalents, which is GICs or turn deposits, that sort of thing, about $2.3 million at the end of December. And so that cash is cash that is available for use to pay um, expenses, accounts payable, um, different things in, in that that day-to-day -day expenses that, that go to the, the WISE operations. There's another line midway down the page, if you look, it's called restricted cash and investments. It's about, the, it's midway down the assets. And that's about $5.1 million. 
that cash is cash that's been set aside in reserves for future years or for, for uh, future uh, um, future expenses. <laughs> Or it's cash that we receive that is from outside sources, so funding agencies that, that, that have a specific purpose. So we set it aside for that. The other key asset that the, the, the Y has is a, is a line called tangible capital assets. And that's what the Y has invested in equipment, buildings, uh, you know, uh, fitness centers, childcare centers. That's what the Y has spent. That's the accounting cost what the Y has spent on us over the years. Um, just going back a page, uh, Erica, or <clears throat> and so that uh, that's our investment. And if you look at what, um, so how is the the why pay for that? If you look down the liabilities, our for our, our tangible capital assets or building equipment, we have things that we borrowed, which is called demand loans, which is midway down the page, and funding that we receive from other from other sources or from our donors. And that shows up on a line called deferred contribution. So it might be hard to see. Um, and so our, our, our assets are funded by those two things. If you look down our liabilities, just jumping ahead, the um, liabilities for the Y, things like accounts payable, deferred revenue, those are things, accounts payable are, are, are amounts that we owe for, for operating expenses that occur at a point in time, but uh, we haven't paid them yet. Deferred revenue is amounts that we receive for revenue and expenses. Um, and again, Erica, you're jumping me ahead. Maybe you're giving me a hint that I gotta go faster. Um, gets down to a line at the bottom called net assets. And if you look at net assets, that's the, the surplus of the Y. And that is made up of a, a couple of different things. There's a line there called unrestricted. So that's surplus that is free to spend on future operations. So for next year's op operations. There's a line called investment in tangible capital assets, and that's our net surplus that we spent on capital assets over the years. Very much like um, the equity in your home, if you will. And the lines underneath that are various reserves we set aside for the future. Liquidity reserve is a reserve that the board set up in prior years for situations like COVID-19, where we've got cash set aside to, to cover uh, unforeseen circumstances. And the other two reserves, Center for Development Reserve and Strategic Reserves, are cast set aside for specific projects or situations like this. So, um, so like investing in a in a childcare center in Penticton was is comes from these reserves here. Um, if you flip over the next page now, um, <clears throat> the why so the why is as Sherry mentioned generates revenue from a couple from various programs that we run. Um, Primary, health, fitness, and aquatics is one of the key areas that we provide, uh, we generate revenue. And that lineup shows up right in this administrate, admissions and memberships revenue line at the top of the page. And as John mentioned, you see that number almost about $8 million in 2019. And it's up um, again over, over the prior year where it was about $7.5 million. So that's just a testimon testimonial to the growth of our, our, our health, fitness, and aquatics operations across Kelowna. Other revenue that we receive are, is program and rentals is uh, comes from programs that the Y offers at its health, fitness, aquatic centers, but it also includes our child care programs. So you'll see that's gone up with the addition of new child care centers that we've operated in the year. Operational funding uh, is funding that we receive from various levels of government for our operations, um, whether it's employment or, or uh, uh, child care operations. You'll see that's gone down from 2018. In that respect, so we had a, a three different employment centers that we ran in 2018 that we the contract did not continue on into 2014. And the other sources of funding, fund development, is the, the, the charitable programs that we run, whether we receive it from outside sources or we receive it from donors. And you, you see the other sources of revenue are um, either from investment income or from other funding that we receive. Uh, <clears throat> if you look at expenses, um, and, and, and like as most organizations, the Y is a very is a people driven organization. It's the people is, is what drives a lot of our programs, and you'll see the biggest expense for the Y is that uh, is labor, um, and you'll see that number about ten point three million dollars. Um, Sharon mentioned the investment in information and technology. <laughs> you'll see that expense has gone up over the prior year, partly because of the investment in the new program that, we're, that we'll be operating in the fall, but also there was a bunch of money, there was a simping expense on, on a program that Y Canada was running in the year that we expense through the current year. 
The long and the short of it is if you go down to the bottom where it says net contribution, you'll see that the Y generated a, a net contribution for the year about $122,000. And, and, and in a not-for-profit, it's always important to be generating a positive contribution because that allows us to put aside cash for future years, um, but it also allows us to invest in the programs that we want to continue to grow. Um, so that's all I had on the financial statements. Um, certainly not as exciting as Sharon's presentation, but I'll have to live with that. Um, so um, I'll open up for questions, but before, just before I do that, I'm gonna put forward a motion to approve the 2019 financial statements as presented. And I will look for a seconder. John Devitt seconds. <clears throat> so are there any questions or any specific questions anybody has on the financial statements? Um, hearing none, then I will. Uh, oh, we will... have, someone has raised their hand, Sharon. Oh, yes, please. Um, Sharon, do you want to ask your question? Hi there, Allison. I was just seconding the motion. Sorry about that. Thank you, Sharon. So with, without further ado, then I'll put it forward to a vote. If, um, <clears throat> uh, oh, I'll leave that. I'll turn it back to Allison to, to do the vote. Thank you. The vote's gonna be up for about five more seconds. <clears throat> Great, um, so the motion is carried. Uh, the next motion that I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to put forward is to, um, is to appoint Grant Thornton as external auditors of for YMC for the year ended December 31st, 2020. Um, this is a uh, December 2019 was the third year we've we've had the um, pleasure of having Grant Thornton do our audit. We really appreciate the hard work that they put in, and uh, the value that they brought through the audit process. And it's our pleasure to put them forward again for another year. So I'm going to put forward the motion to appoint um, as auditors for the the 2020 fiscal year. Uh, can I have someone second that motion? Seconded by Judy Shoemaker. Thank you. Is there any uh, questions or comments? Uh, hearing none, I will pass it back to Allison to, to um, put forward a vote. Should be on your screens now. And about five more seconds. And great with that, that I'll turn it back to John. Okay, thanks Dave. I believe uh, the motion was passed. Um, 
thank you for the detailed explanation of the financial results. And uh, I've said this before, you're uh, the only guy who truly makes accounting fun. So um, thank you. Uh, I'm going to now turn it over to Joni Metherell. She's the chair of our governance committee for our governance report. Thanks, John. Uh, one of the roles of the governance committee is to prepare a slate of nominees to the board of directors for election by the members at the AGM. At this annual general meeting, the governance committee is presenting five directors whose current terms have expired and who are standing for re-election for a subsequent two-year term. The current board member profiles, as well as this year's director nominees, were included in the link that was sent to you for tonight's meeting. And on the screen um, currently are our existing six uh, board members who are continuing to serve a, uh, a two-year term. And those are Dave Bond, Rod Gibbings, Stephen Pavlich, Judy Shoemaker, Amy Gopal, and Stephen Morrison. Now, the next slide um, that you will see are the five uh, directors whose term has expired and are standing for re-election for a subsequent two-year term. And those board members are John Duff, Randy Schuler, Bree Lake, John Divot, and Deanne Taylor. And then we have a uh, incoming new board member, uh, and here she is, and her name is Marilyn Scott, and she is standing for election for the first of uh, for her first two year term on the board. Uh, so as the chair of the governance committee, I would like to make a motion to elect the slate of nominees to the board of directors as presented. And may I please have a seconder for that motion? Oh, you can do that by typing second into the chat box. A motion to elect the state slate of nominees to the YMCA Board of Directors has been seconded by Dave Bond. Great, thank you, Dave. Uh, is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, you can make a comment uh, or ask a question by using the Q&A, the chat, or the raise hand controls. So we'll give you a few, few seconds here to decide if you wanna do that. All right, I don't, I don't see any hands up or um, questions having been raised. Um, so members, would you please register your vote by using the poll that will now pop up on your screen. We'll give everyone time to record their vote. The poll will be up for about five more seconds. And the results are on screen. Okay, the motion to elect the 2020 Board of Directors has been passed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joni. Thank you for your report. And um, especially thank you for your commitment to the YMCA and your community over the last, uh, over the last decade. Uh, before turning it over uh, to our incoming chair, I would like to take a quick moment uh, to reflect on, on my two years as, uh, as board chair. I am uh, very proud of the work of this organization and continuing to provide diverse and socially inclusive environments to offer opportunities to our members and improve the well-being of our communities. Helping people in the community reach their potential. I have seen from this uh, talented group of staff and volunteers bringing enthusiasm and focus to growing this every day. Uh, there are no words to my gratitude to the leaders, staff, and volunteers of this organization and the hard work they continue to put forward to grow a healthier community. 
And lastly, thank you to my fellow board members. Thank you for continuing to commit to your community, investing in your neighbor's well-being, and helping this community rise to its potential. It's now my absolute pleasure to introduce and turn this meeting over to our incoming board chair, Stephen Pavlich. Hi, John, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, a moment of levity here, I think, John. I was trying to think of an analogy of, uh, of all the work that you've done for the why. Uh, before the seriousness starts, I'd like to think that this has been like a child taking a car out for a two-year joyride and that you've taken care of it, you've buffed it, you've taken it to the, to the wash, but it still comes back on empty and it's got a few dents in it. So everything looks great and things just will continue to move along and we'll do our best. Uh, your two years on the board as, as a chairman has been um, a tough act to follow, John. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for your friendship uh, you have been an amazing colleague, and I look forward to continuing to serve on the board with you. As, uh, as I enter into my chairmanship, I realize our YMCA will operate very differently as we move through the COVID crisis and then into ultimately recovery. I'm confident that with the support of a passionate and dedicated board and staff team, we will be okay. I anticipate in the coming months that much of our strategic work will evolve through the closure period into reopening and beyond. That could include exploring methods to deliver more services virtually or online, creating new programs to respond to community needs and leveraging new partnerships and funding sources to fill any opportunities that may arise from this crisis. What will the normal why look like or a new why? We don't really know, but the one thing you can count on is that your board is committed to and will always ensure a solid infrastructure for an even stronger YMCA in the future. Thank you again to all our members, donors, staff, volunteers and partners for your ongoing support. So this concludes the business portion of our annual general meeting. I'd like a, a mover and a secondary for a motion to adjourn the 2019 annual general meeting. You can do so by typing move or second into the chat box. We have, oh, we have a mover, Steve Morrison, and a seconder, Jennifer Bullcock. Okay, thank you. Is there any discussion on the motion? You can make a comment or you can ask a question, question by using the Q&A chat or raise hands controls. Allison, any comments? Nope, doesn't look like it. No, okay, well it's time, time for a vote then. So please register your vote by using the poll that will now pop up or just has, and give everyone time to record their votes. The poll will be up for about five more seconds. Okay. So unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Motion to adjourn is passed. So now I'm just going to hand this over to Kelly Taylor, who's our Vice President of Health, Fitness and Aquatics, who will be recognizing some of our longer term, our longer term staff and volunteers. Kelly. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, the AGM would normally be the venue that we announce recipients of three special annual volunteer awards. The Jill Siebert Award of Excellence, the Young Volunteer of the Year Award, and the Significant Contribution Award. Unfortunately, we weren't able to execute the volunteer nomination process in March, but hope to in the fall, at which time we look forward to recognizing and celebrating our valued volunteers for their gifts of time, expertise, mentorship, and leadership. 
We would like to recognize our staff and volunteers who have reached significant years of service milestones in 2019. We have eight team members celebrating 10 years of service. And you can see it on the screen there, they are Richard Locke, Christine Whitaker, Jennifer Bullcock, Alyssa Jackson, Peggy Kramer, Jane Rasmussen, Colleen Keeler, and Belinda Campbell. We also have three staff members who have worked for the YMCA for 15 plus years, and I'll take a few minutes to share with you a few of their incredible contributions and successes during their tenure. 15 year staff, Lori Nesdoli. Lori's YMCA journey that started 15 years ago began at the Kelowna Family YMCA and the Member Services Department. Lori's desire to grow within the Y and her strong administrative skills provided her the opportunity to become a supervisor as well as an ad additional administrative roles within the Y. Currently, Lori is part of our H2O health and fitness team providing administrative support to our coaches and supervisors. We want to thank Lori for her years of service and commitment to the Y. For 20 years of service, we have Carlene Sewell. Carlene's dedication and support to the YMCA over the past 20 years is undeniable. From her start at the Y as a fitness manager to developing into a general manager role, Carlene is an inspiring leader and mentor. Today, Carlene's focus is on promoting health to those suffering from chronic pain and or disease and don't know where to begin. Over the past few years, Carlene has been instrumental in bringing the Small Steps for Big Changes Diabetes Prevention Program to our community through the WISE Health and Fitness Centers. I have personally had the privilege of working very closely with Carlene over the past 10 years and her passion to build a healthier community through the WISE charitable mission is infectious. Thank you so much, Carlene, for dedicating so much, of, so much to the Y, and we look forward to many more years to come. And we have, for 25 years of service, Randall White. Randall's love for water and his fun and passionate personality has made an unforgettable resource for our YMCA. Randall started as a lifeguard at the Y while he was traveling the world as a scuba, scuba diving instructor. From an early age, Randall displayed true leadership and coaching skills as he began his journey into a life of aquatics. Quickly, Randall became an aquatics instructor, supervisor, and then manager, all while ga gaining invaluable knowledge and skills that the aquatics team across the country would come to rely on. Randall has been called upon the, by the Ys across Canada to assist in building their aquatic centers. As well, he has been an important resource to Y Canada in assisting the, in assisting the country in building various aquatic programs and standards. Randall's passion and dedica dedication has most recently secured him the general manager position at the Kelowna Family Y. Thank you, Randall, for all that you do for our Y and helping to build the YMCA family. We all look forward to working with you in your new role and seeing your continued growth within the Y. Thank you again to everyone who makes our work possible. We miss you all and look forward to reconnecting when we all can. Thanks for that, Kelly. That's, uh, and thank you to all the staff and the volunteers, both the, uh, all of you that were recognized this evening and, and to the entire organization. Uh, you truly do an incredible job and, uh, and with your work and with your assistance, we know that uh, uh, brighter times are certainly ahead. I'd now like to take a, uh, just a couple of minutes to invite all of you or any of you to, uh, to comment on uh, or provide any questions that you may have. Again, to do this, you can use the Q&A, the chat, or the raise your hand feature on the screen. Uh, while we wait for anyone to do this, I'd like to remind those that are watching the live stream through YouTube that you can make comments or ask questions by emailing, emailing them to hello at ymcaokanagan.ca. Our staff will be happy to respond to those questions in the next couple of business days. So Allison, I'll wait for you to hear if we have anything. I'm not seeing any comments coming yet. Thank you for that. We'll give a, a few more seconds before we formally adjourn the meeting. Okay, well, hearing nothing and seeing nothing, I'd like to thank everybody that, uh, that presented this evening. 
uh, and to all those that attended. Allison, especially congratulations and, and thanks to you for uh, an apparently seamless transition from the real world to the virtual world. So many, many thanks for all your work there. Uh, if nobody else has any questions, then I think we can formally sign off. Sharon, would you like a last word? Uh, the next time I do this, I'm going to have my husband sit across from me and do stupid things like jumping jacks or something so I can stop crying. <laughs> but thank you, everyone. This has been um, a real experience, the, this virtual thing. Um, and uh, we can't wait to see you in person. Um, hopefully not, we don't have to wait a whole year until the next annual general meeting, but we'd love to see you in our facilities when they reopen. All right, well, thank you, everyone.